Hi there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK into your homes. Welcome to my channel. Um, and yes, if you like what I talk about, click the subscribe button. You can either like or you can put your thumbs down if you don't like what I talk about. You can engage with my many subscribers. Yeah, you can do any of those things. Anyway, today I wanted to respond to a video I was watching. Um, I think it is the video of a nationalist. Um, might be wrong, but from what I gather, she's saying that the Brits shouldn't be guilty about the past. They shouldn't feel guilty about treating us as slaves. They shouldn't feel guilty um, about the colonialism that they inflicted on so many people. And it reminded me of Boris Johnson um, saying that he wishes colonialism would come back. Apparently, his exact words are... Um, he defended colonialism and advocated Britain reinstated control over the colonies in Africa. Boris said the problem is not that we were once in charge, but that we are not in charge anymore. He wrote the best fate for Africa would be if the old colonial powers and their citizens scrambled once again in her direction, that's the direction of Africa, on the understanding that only this time they would not be asked to feel guilty. So there's no remorse. And on the one hand, you can say, well, those people who are colonialised, they, they set themselves up for it. It's their fault. But you have to remember that those who were colonialised, the slaves, um, well, the ones who were made into slaves, they were actually indoctrinated. And you're thinking about a race of people years and years back who were indoctrinated, who were made to feel that the Bible was their, was their foundation, that they should obey, that they should trust, that they should uh, be self-sacrificial. And so with that kind of backdrop, you know, when people come over and they are coming with their conniving ways, the, this set of people were not aware of what was going to happen. So, yeah, you can say, oh, serves them right. How can you indoctrinate a race of people? You know, there's a few of them and there's more of you and you manage to indoctrinate them. How did that guy manage to take all of those people to that remote place and get them to kill themselves? under the name of God or Jesus. You see, I think people underestimate the power of religion. And that is what happened. These, these, um, the people who were colonialized were victims of Christianity or victims of religion, which left them feeling as though they had to obey. They took the Bible literally and they felt as though this was what they were meant to do. Obey and be self-sacrificial, be um, cooperative, be um, selfless, you know, serve. All of those things, all of the things that the Bible tells you to do, to love your enemy. So they were obeying the Bible and, and despite... Um, the colonialism, treating them so badly. They had this massive faith in God that they felt would see them through. So that was their crime, believing in God, believing in the Almighty. That led them into their disposition. Now, because of that, that doesn't mean that the colonial powers should have exploited that mentality. But they were the one who indoctrinated them. So it was a setup. So when, I mean, Jeremy Corbyn is supposed to be looking into colonialization, but it's, you know, and the fact that Boris Johnson wants to bring it back is scary. But I did write a few notes um, based on what she said. She said um, that the Brits are proud of the British Empire and colonialism. Well, judging from Boris Johnson, that's true. Boris said the problem, oh, I've said that. Um, yeah. Um, they said, should the Brits, should those same Brits feel guilty about something that they have nothing to do with today? Now, my response is that, yes, 
the Brits today don't have nothing to do with the past in that in no direct um, in no no direct involvement with the past but the fact that they are emulated and repeating that same destructive behavior means that they should be held accountable it's fine if that happened in the past and you know the colonialism happened in the past the racism happened in the past slavery happened in the past and it stayed there and then the new breed of white people were differently who had a different and more evolved mind and didn't think the way same way as the oppressors then yeah you couldn't hold them accountable but the fact of the matter is there are those who are now even in today's times who think like the colonial the co colonizers who think like the oppressors and boris johnson is one of them he said it with his own mouth trump is another so if you've got people who still want to emulate the um, their ancestors, you have to be accountable today because you haven't learned. So it's no point saying, oh, you can't blame us for what went on in the past and you're still repeating the same behaviour because that is what's happening. And that is why black people have an issue. That is why black people have are asking for reparations and those reparations don't have to be money it could be symbolic reparations in the sense that you are showing us a change of behavior a change of attitude a change where you have evolved in your actually in the 20th century and accept that people are different whether it's ethnicity whether it's race whether it's gender whether it's sexual orientation whether it's religion Whatever it is, people are different. And in 2019, we would expect that, you know, the white people who are thinking like Boris Johnson would have evolved and be in a totally different mindset. But they're still stuck in the past. They want to bring back what happened in the 1800s that's what they want to do they want to dominate black people again they want to suppress and oppress black people again and that is black people's issue so it's not that you know we keep going on and going on but the fact that, that we have an unfair police force that deals in racial profiling we have the home office that is um using biased instruments to to um, screen applications the fact that the biometric systems are, are work are work to disadvantage black people the fact that you have um, systems to stop and search and section 60 all of these things in place to oppress the fact that the prisons are over represented by black people so you have all of these systems in place that emulate what happened centuries ago and then you're saying we should we, we should forget about it it's in the past when you're still repeating it now in the present so how the hell are we supposed to move on when you keep going on with the same bloody thing it's like reinventing the wheel and then you're kind and you know this particular woman had such a mocking voice that just to say oh you know they get this and they can use their laptops and they can come to this country and they can do this and they can do that and you know um england was white at one point before 1942 yeah it would have remained white if you never bloody asked us to come over here yeah? it would have remained white why the hell did you ask us to come over here and work if you wanted to re remain homogenous if you wanted to remain white you should not you had no business number one you had no business taking slaves out of africa and bringing them to your white country and you had no business going to the commonwealth and asking them to build up your country you had no business doing that if you wanted a white britain a white australia or a white america 
Why the hell did you take us from where we were and put us in your white country? And then you've got the audacity to say, oh, you know, we were white before 1942. And we, you know, you're taking over our houses and you're doing this and you're doing that. We didn't ask to freaking come here. And the fact of the matter is, is that because we were here and because we were working and because this became our home, because we were British citizens at the time, we then had our families and our families are in this country and they were allowed to be in this country and they didn't even need a visa at that point. And you could bring over your family and you could start a life and everybody's working. It was all happy families. But the undercurrents, we didn't know the undercurrents. We, I mean, black people assumed, I mean, yes, we experienced racism, but we thought it was a minority. And it still is a minority to a degree, but that minority is very, very large and very, very influential. So even though it's small, if it's rich and powerful, they might as well be millions and millions of them. Because that very few is what is going to make the difference and try to, to um, repeat history, because that is what they want to do. So, um, so it, what I was writing here is that it's the collateral damage that is constantly repeating itself today, and that is the problem. If racism and a colonial mentality did not rear its ugly head every day as black people, we would not constantly be reminded about how different and how less relevant we are in some people's eyes. We would not have to keep repeating ourselves. And then by repeating itself, the media makes it look like, oh, they're going on about it. They, you know, they're not happy that they're in this country and they've got a bed to lie in and they got this as though we didn't have that where we were living. They're making it look like, you know, they have met, they have civilized us. That is how they're trying to interpret by showing us images of people and poverty. They're trying to make it look like to people who do not know that they have civilized us. And now we're in homes and now we've got laptops and now we've got phones we've never ever seen before. That's how they're making it look. But we were a civilized society. We were a civilized generation and we still are. You go to different parts of the world if you haven't travelled, you'll know that. So, we do not complain about the British for no good reason. And I, we would stop complaining if they didn't keep going on about us, you know, us being as though we planted ourselves here. And we, it's so annoying. British did and still do benefit from colonialism, but what is concert disconcerting is that their mess, massive ego makes them want to hold on to that mentality. And like I said, I'm not talking about all Brits. I'm talking about the influential ones, the ones who are making it seem as though we, sh we are a lesser people. We are substandard. We are a second class. That is the issue. I'm talking about because we are all equal but they have an issue and the thing is is that it's obvious that we're all equal otherwise you wouldn't have some people having regardless of their race and their color and some people have not if it was in heaven in us to be inferior we wouldn't have a brain we wouldn't be able to match people in education, match people in intelligence, match people in sports, and even um, excel in certain areas if we were an inferior race. That would not happen. And the fear, I believe, is that they know that if we were to be given our equal rights, we would excel. And by excelling, the Brits would then become second citizens if black people had the same mentality 
as those people who want to indoctrinate us. But black people do not have that mentality. Black people are still children of God and they believe in a higher force. That doesn't make them weak. That doesn't make them vulnerable. But it does make them have a faith that is so strong that they do believe that they will overcome one day. But they cannot do it in a subservient mindset. That cannot work. So where am I now? Should the Brits feel guilty about what their ancestors did? Only if they have been unable to resolve the conflict that exists because of warp mentalities who want to maintain that mentality today. So what I'm saying, they, you know, those people, they don't need to feel guilty if they've evolved and, you know, they're mixing with people and they're seeing everybody as equal and, you know, they have the, the wherewithal and the intelligence to realise that we're not here, here to hurt anyone. We're not the enemy. And once they realise that, then we can move on. But so there will be certain Brits who have, they don't have to feel guilty. And the sad thing is, it's the ones that don't have to feel guilty who feel guilty. The ones who are up in their high echelon sitting at the top, you know, making all these orders and trying to control the world. They're the ones who need to feel guilty because they want to emulate the same, um, the same bad habits and bad attitude that their ancestors had. So they cannot feel ashamed of incidents they did not directly influence, but they can feel ashamed of the way they're handling it today, which is a replication of past behaviour and attitude. And I'm talking about those who are replicating that past behaviour. I'm not talking about every white person. Of course I'm not. Like I said, you know, there are those who feel guilty on behalf of those who should feel guilty, but don't. The Brits may feel that they should not pay reparations for something they had, had nothing to do with. But my argument is that reparations do not need to be monetary. They can be symbolic through a change in behaviour, a change in how people are informed and educated, a change in how the media promotes and promotes um and or denigrates as they see fit to serve their agenda. So white Brits are embarrassed at the way, some white Brits are embarrassed at the way their ancestors treat a class of people and they can preserve a better future by trying to change attitudes and behaviour. And there are those that do are doing that. And, you know, it's it's wonderful that there are people out there who are trying to change attitudes and behaviour. There's a lot to be done because you know the sad thing is is that those are trying to change and we still can't change the people at the top. The rich, the powerful and they're the ones who want to get in so they can turn this world upside down. Reverse all the progress that has been made. That is what they want to do. Boris Johnson in particular. And you don't look at his character, you don't look at his words, just look at his character in the past. See what he's saying. And it's not very nice. And, you know, I was talking about, you know, his his um, statement about the letterboxes, the Muslim women being looking like letterboxes, which caused 375% rise in hate crime. 375% rise and these and these people have the audacity to look on the little people and say oh be careful that what you write down it doesn't constitute um, hate crime we're always being told be careful not to incite violence and yet somebody who's in a position of power in quotes this was done before he was Prime Minister, of course. I think it was in 2002. But the fact of the matter is, somebody like him, he got away with inciting violence and hate crime because what he said was as a direct result, they're saying, of that statement. After that statement, 375% hate crime against Muslims. And so... 
how come he's not accountable for that? Some Brits believe that they should be proud that they use their strength, resources and intellect to wield immense power over the Africans. They did that to people who trusted them, but that wasn't strength. It was trickery and weakness. The resources they used were ours as black people and the intellect was connivance. I could be of the view what it, that it serves them right. When I say serves them right, I'm talking about this, the people who were enslaved. Sorry, the people who were enslaved by allowing them to be by allowing themselves to be dominated. But when a people have been indoctrinated, like I said, through Christianity, to believe that the correct way to behave is self-sacrificing, trusting, and the correct attitude is to be respectful and cooperative regardless of the treatment they received, it is no wonder they ended up in the predicament when those they were offering pearls to were swine who took advantage of the same traits they indoctrinated them with. And that's all I've got to say. Bye-bye.